Tobin and Felipe Alves uh, from Brazil. I want to put it here in the screen. Uh, hello, Felipe. Hello, Cristiano. Good morning. Hello, good morning. good morning. Okay, I can hear you. Uh, Cristiano is a programmer with 10 years of experience in designing and development digital products and system. And Felipe Alves is a transport engineer uh, focus in sustainable modes and, of course, uh, OSM makers. So, guys, uh, the present uh, the uh, the room is yours. You can start your presentation. I, I want to uh, uh, I I need your presentation. Uh, you can share it with me. Just a oh, second. Just a second. Okay, I see it here. Let me remove. Okay, can we start? Yeah. So, good morning. Uh, buenos dias. Vamos a hacer en you can uh, large your screen. Uh huh. Okay, better. it's better. It's better. Okay. It's better now. Great, thanks. Uh, vamos a hacer en inglés porque nuestro español no es super bueno. Pero si quieres hacer comentarios, preguntas después en español, por favor, sin problemas en portugués también. Um, okay, so let's start. So as Narcelio has said, I'm a, I'm a developer and product designer. Uh, I actually, I work more as a designer nowadays. And uh, I'm a cyclo activist, a maps lover. In my free time, I like to do open source projects. And I'm a, I'm a transportation engineer, as Narcelio said, but also I am the director, I'm one of the directors at Brazil Cyclist Union, UCB, that is a civil society organization in advocacy for cycling. Nice. We're going to talk a little bit more about UCB in a second. So our team, uh, I think it's interesting to, to comment, like, we are from Brazil. In Brazil, it's, everyone knows it's a very, very uh, big country. And in our team, currently, we have people from all extremes of Brazil. Like, we have me from the very south, and uh, Felipe uh, from Fortaleza and people from the middle. Uh, but still, th there are lots of regions in Brazil that we are not, uh, we don't have people in the team right now, but we hope we can have in the future. So a little bit of context on how everything started. Why, why we started Cyclomap or Cyclomapa, right? So in Brazil, we didn't have a centralized solution for uh, mapping. Brazilian city cycling infrastructure. We needed a uh, standardized and uh, collaborative and open data about cities so that we could easily compare cities and uh, download the, the data and the researchers and people that need the data can download easily, uh, process the data easily, etc. cetera. And, uh, and also for advocacy, like, having all this data standardized and centralized help us measure and visualize opportunities uh, that can impact society in improving urban mobility. Uh, in our case here, focused on cycling, right? So this is was how the cycle maps in Brazil looked like. And I'm pretty sure probably you, everyone here um, can relate to this because I, I guess in many countries uh, people have been using many different kind of tools people from like doing PDFs to be printed uh, of the of the bike maps but even using some very simple software that is very easy to use like Google my maps are using more professional software as K kgs right and uh, you want to talk about a little more 
Yeah, okay. So uh, these are two civil society organizations, uh, UCB, it's the one I am part of, and ITDP, it's the Institute for Transportation and Development Policies. Uh, so they united to bring the solution of uh, have the standardized uh, bicycle maps for all of the Brazilian cities. That's right. And um, back then, there was this platform as well, uh, which was developed by ITDP, which is called Mobilidados. And uh, they were starting to develop this platform as well. And uh, it's this is more a platform uh, for the data and indicators and metrics for urban mobility as uh, in general. And they needed the access to this kind of data. So Ciclomapa uh, was born um, like like twins, right? Mobilidad and Ciclovapa were born a little more in the same time. So uh, Guma, I'm gonna talk a little about the cycling infrastructure so that everyone knows uh, at least a bit about it. So uh, we have different cycling infrastructures in different countries. In, here in Brazil, we decided to follow our technical guides and technical manuals and to classify our infrastructure in these four layers. Uh, uh, from the left to the right, the left one is the least desirable and the right one is the better. I will talk a little bit about each one. Uh, the, the first one is just a shared space on the sidewalk, so we don't like it very much because they force the cyclists and pedestrians to share uh, a space that usually is not much. The second one, we call it cycle routes. Uh, people in North America know it by sharrows. It's just a shared space in a common street just with signals to indicate that this is a route for cyclists. The third one is the cycle lanes. It's the painted lanes on the roads that are exclusive for cyclists. And these are really different from city to city, but in most cases they have some small segregation elements, just not the painted lines. And the better one is the cycle tracks. There are the fully segregated tracks. So what we had to do was to translate the tags and keys from OpenStreetMap to these layers. Now it's they, in OpenStreetMap, they don't call with, with the same uh, names that we give them or that we call them. So we have a lot of different keys and tags for each one of these layers. And we show in Ciclomapa also some other layers like the low speed roads, the uh, off road tracks and paths, and the places where that are prohibited to bike. And besides these layers, we have uh, other layers of points of interest like bike shops, uh, bike parkings, and bike sharing station. These are these are also layers. And we have some other elements that appear on the map that are useful for cyclists, like water fountains, uh, public restrooms, and air pumps. So before we go a little deeper on how everything works technically wise, I'm going to do a very, very quick uh, demo here for you. I think you can still see my screen, right? So. This is Ciclomapa uh, live in production. Let me increase the size here of the screen. Um, so it has all the layers here that you can activate and see more information about it. It's fully interactive and uh, the level of detail will change depending on the zoom level. And uh, everything is interactive so you can click and see more information about it. We don't show everything that comes from OSM, from OpenStreetMap, but we translate and filter some most relevant uh, information. You can change cities here. So we have any Brazilian city available that you want. So Rio de Janeiro, for example. And uh, there is also this new feature, which was the most recent one that we are starting to develop those metrics. So we have uh, some metrics that are, are calculated uh, offline, which is PNB, which is the, we're going to talk a, a little bit more later, but the length of the different uh, kinds of structures and the amount of points of interest and etc. 
you can change the base map and uh, so this is just to give a brief overview and then on the questions if you want to see more you can also access the link already so let's jump back to the presentation So how it works. So I'm going to talk about these three main layers. Uh, we have the Mapbox base layer. Mapbox is a, a, a framework, a library for rendering maps, right? Then we have the OpenStreetMap data with psychopaths and points of interest. And on the top of that, we have metrics and controls, right? So talking about Mapbox, um, Mapbox is a really great uh, library for visualizing and rendering maps uh web-based and it has native as well and uh they have this great tool which is called studio where you can everything is o osm based openstreetmap based all the data comes from openstreetmap so you can leverage all the data that uh, not all the data but most of the data from openstreetmap and you can customize the look and filter what we're gonna show or not it's a great tool uh, then on top of that, we have OpenStreetMap. So we, we created as a kind of language for describing the different kinds of uh, layers that we have on, on the map right now. So we have bike shops and bike parkings and the cycle roads, for example. And here you have the tags that Felipe mentioned before. And we translate that into a query language that OpenStreetMaps use, which is called Overpass. So... Um, we translate that and we query overpass for this data to put it on top of the map. We also use Firebase, which is just uh, one a database, a very easy to use database, where we store uh, this data because overpass is a little slow. Uh, so we don't do that while the user is interacting with the tool. Uh, so basically, we try to get data from uh, Firebase. This is the web app. And if it has the data, we very quickly get this data. Otherwise, we go to OSM. And there is also a hidden button that you can click and do a manual update. If you are like editing the data in OpenStreetMap and you want to see this reflect on, on Ciclomapa. And finally, on the last level, we have um, the metrics panel, and uh, this is very simple. Like uh, for the for the point of interest, we just use JavaScript to count how many of them are. Then we use Turf, which is an open source library for different kinds of geospatial calculations. So they help us measure the length of the structures. And for these other metrics, since they are calculated offline, we use Airtable, which is works like a database, but also a CMS, a content management system, which our team can go there and edit those numbers and we just pull from there the, the numbers, okay? So this is like how our table looks. And we have a comments feature as well that you can leave comments on the map. And we also use our table here so you can see an example of how our team can see those comments. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some research that we are done using Ciclomapa data. Uh, first here, you have some access data. So uh, there are 320 Brazilian cities that already have been accessed, uh, an average of 900 users per month, uh, 300 uh, thousand page views and uh, a really good rating for the from the users so this is one of the indicators that we show it's an indicator created by ITDP the PNB that means people near bikeways and it represents the percentage of the city population that lives within 300 meters of the bikeways so they get the data from OpenStreetMap by Ciclomapa and cross with the data from the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics. And so they calculate uh, how many of the population 
lives near the the bikeways for all the state capitals of Brazil. And also they have in the population data, they can do another research like they, they have seen that in 20 capitals, the percentage of black women near the bikeways is lower than the population average. And in 17 capitals, the percentage of households with higher income is two times higher than the percentage of households near the bikeways is two times higher than the households with lower income. And this is another research. This is from a uh, gov government office, IPEA, that means uh, Institute of Research for uh, Applied Economics. And these measure access to opportunities. So they, this mean, they, they, they measure access to ease of access to healthcare facilities, to schools, and to job opportunities. And they do it by three means of transport, by bus or public transport in general, by foot and by bicycle. And to do this by bicycle, they use data from Ciclomapa. So this is uh, some media coverage that we got. You have, uh, for example, news from uh, regular media or from, from specialized blogs and OSM Weekly and uh, all kinds of things. Okay, so uh, wrapping up, uh, talking a little bit about the future of Ciclomapa. Currently, Ciclomapa only works in Brazil, and we have been developing it, improving it for two years, I think. And uh, we think the next steps, uh, we have lots of ideas to improve it and add more features uh, for Brazilian cities, but we are already talking about um, ITDP Global, uh, which is the, the global part of ITDP, um, to make a new version of Ciclomapa, which will be like international. And as you can see here, we are looking at the Ciclomapa for Buenos Aires, which is not something that you can do on Ciclomapa if you go to the website right now, because we filter only Brazilian cities. But it, it works. It has some performance issues and some things that we have to fix so we can make it international and that's something that we're gonna be working on the on the near future uh and we also want to add more like country level features so any so different countries can have different uh definitions for those layers as we know some tags in osm can change depending on the country like different countries have different ways of using them so we're gonna develop this kind of customization so it can work globally but not necessarily with the same solution mm, i think that's it uh so you can visit us on ciclomapa.org.br we have all the code on in github and you can also access more documentation on this website here from UCB. Um, we're going to be responding questions now. Uh, but you can also contact us by, via email if you want. We're gonna, I think that's it. We're going to leave uh, more time to questions. So, guys, we have 10 minutes uh, for uh answer the, the the questions we have uh a lot of questions for for you oh, great. Amazing. uh i share uh so uh sorry uh the questions uh is is coming now and i have to to put here in screen so uh the first i, I think the the you uh, just answered but uh it's only in brazil seats uh uh, and uh, what you take to extend this for all of the world? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I, re I answered a little bit, but I can go a little deeper. Um, so it's very tricky because different uh, cities have different ways of mapping. Different countries have different ways of mapping. And uh, it was uh, already very tricky to make it work for all Brazilian cities, especially the biggest ones like Sao Paulo, Brasilia. Uh, sometimes we have to do some local optimizations uh, for it to not be too slow and etc. But I think that's it. I think it's more like a technical issue of having 
enough time and team, you know, to to make it work for other countries. Uh, we don't have um, the, the servers as well. Like we we cannot handle currently like thousands of people accessing it. We wouldn't have to the budget for that, but that's something that we we are working on. Okay. Uh, the next question is about holding. The, the cycle map works oh. with holding? Uh, yeah, we don't have this feature uh, right now. Um, that's one of the most requested features, I think. But I think it's important to point out that we have been focusing on a specific kind of user for the, <laughs> for the platform, which is not the common day cyclist uh, usage. Uh, we have been focusing on people that need access to the data and wants to study data and they want to do, download the data. And we are trying to provide features for this kind of people. And maybe in the future, we can develop features like routing, which uh, at least we think are more useful for the day-to-day -day cyclist, which currently already has other solutions uh, proprietary solutions, of course, uh, that works very well. Don't know okay. if you want to add up. No, uh, yeah, the, I think it's okay. It's, okay. I guess it's, I think it's answered. Okay. okay, the next question is about the, the sport in the cycle that you work in, in Jopecate, JSON, if you have uh, adding this option in your application. Yeah, we, we have this feature already. If, like when you were looking at the city, you can just, there is a download button on the top right corner, which just says download, and it, it downloads all the uh, data in Jiao, Jiao JSON, which uh, we hope is a great format for everyone that wants to study. But if you need other formats or need our other things, please contact us. Okay, uh, the next question is about the uh, data update. Uh, can users suggest uh, or make change? Yeah, you want to take this one, Felipe? Uh, all the data is from OpenStreetMap, so anyone can ed edit the data there. Uh, you can, uh, after you do, you just go come back to SQLMapper and hit the update button, and it will update the data uh, for the city. And if you want to suggest changes uh, in the application itself, you can contact us and we can have a talk about that. Yeah. Well, just, uh, just to compliment, uh, if you don't know how to use OpenStreetMap, we have tutorials that Philippe nice. has created. And also, if you don't have time to see the tutorials and etc., but you just see that there is a little problem on the map, we have a very easy to use tool that you can leave a comment on the map so other people that can edit the data later can see the comments. The, 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 tutorials, the tutorials are only in Brazilian Portuguese, Portuguese, unfortunately, but maybe in the future we can do that in other languages as well. Yeah. Oh, I think the, just uh, uh, answer the, the, the question. Uh, I would like to help with the stand of my seat, how I can help, I think you just talking about is OSM database, so it's open OSM and make it the, your additions. But uh, anything more about these questions? Yeah, like if, if this person is from Brazil, it's very easy. It's just mm -hmm. edit the data on OpenStreetMap. If this person is not from Brazil, you can contact us to see how we can work together on this new international version of SQL Map. Okay, uh, the last question is, uh, have you noticed any changes in OSM participation since you started these projects? Uh, have this encouraged people to contribute or to OSM? Uh, take this one? Yeah, uh, we've been trying to improve the coverability of some cities that we know that they have a cycling network, but it's not mapped. So uh, in UCB, UCB is a national association. So we have contacts from people from all of the states. Uh, we're trying to make contacts to people from specific states to improve the coverability. And I'm trying to teach people how to map. So I've already managed to do that in two 
uh, capitals from the north region of Brazil, that is the least mapped region. And we're trying to do this year, we're trying to do another kind of mapathons so people, more people could learn how to map and contribute to on this series. Yeah, and just to complement, this is a great question because in the beginning of the project, we were like, do we want to use OSM uh, data, which is not very complete? And it's a chicken egg problem because if you don't have a tool like Cyclomapa, which is very easy to visualize the data, maybe. And we have heard people that use OSM saying, okay, I put the data there, but uh, th there's not an easy way to consume it and to be used by the general public. So we have, we are, we're trying to do this, make this wheel uh, spin. And I think it's starting to, to happen. Did we okay. Uh, Where is Marcelo? Uh, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, it, because uh, I, I have a last question. This is, uh, one, you talk about hackathon and mapathons. So uh, anything, uh, made these questions is auto October is here. And if I have any issues, so people collaborating during uh, the October fest. Yeah, that's a great, like we, we joined this uh, last year. We have lots of issues on GitHub. We're gonna try again this year. Last year uh, we tried and we didn't have many contributions other than people uh, fixing typos. <laughs> But I think it's a common thing with Oktoberfest. People just want the t-shirt. I don't know. But we're going to try again. And uh, if this person is a developer, uh, just access our GitHub. And we have lots of issues that I mean, we can discuss. Uh, everything is in English in the project. So I, I hope it's easy to collaborate. OK. Hey, um, we have uh, one minute. We have another question. So be uh, fast if you can, but uh, I think there's an important <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult uh, yeah, to answer in just one minute. <laughs> uh, you can, I, I, I you, you guys, you can share in the chat the, the contacts, the email and GitHub projects in the chat of the vendor list for the, the rest of people. And I think uh, uh, you can uh, answer uh, these questions uh, in the mail for, for, for the people because your time is up yeah. and I need to go to uh, Nicolas and Fiorella now. Yeah, thanks, Narcelio. And we're going to be on the social gathering uh, right now if anyone wants to come and talk to us and chat a little bit. Thanks, everyone. It was great. Great, great presentation, guys. I'm so proud for this project to come to Brazil and uh, nice, nice to meet you uh, in person. Uh, Cristiano, uh, Felipe is my friend in Fortaleza. So, yeah. so guys, thank you for your presentation and uh, see you in social gathering later for talking more about this project. Definitely. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. <laughs> So uh, um, the next presentation uh, uh, is in Spanish. So uh, we have uh, one minute for change the, the, the configuration here and go back with uh, Nicolas and Fiorella. Mm -hmm. 